I remember a lot of the war materials being brought back. I always remember like some of the deliberate destruction that took place, like for instance stacks of new buckets or bowls that had deliberately had a nail driven through them so they were just useless to anybody. You know, and that was how they trek the surplus war material to ensure that people didn't get a free bucket or a free bowl. You know, mm -hmm. Uniforms that came back in huge bills and I suppose they were only destroyed really. So that would be like to keep the keep the competitive market going, like by damaging a lot of stuff kind of thing. Like yeah, that, yeah. Right. It was to, to ensure that it couldn't be used again. You know, that's why it was done. I didn't know about that. Then, um, then we got to, uh, you get things like wireless sets with a phenomenon uh, uh, just to make them useless. And a lot of these went to places like Aircliff where they recovered some of the materials <laughs> like aluminium and things like that. Uh, I also remember like the tanks coming back from the uh, Middle East, we had shiploads of surface war material brought back. I know it was a fascination for us as kids to be climbing over them. Mm. And um, well, I said kids, I was working, but you know, we were not young, climbing over and into the tanks and that sort of thing. Um, but the war had its drawbacks. So but I, I think the war did develop a community, you know, developed a community spirit and um, not to overlook the destruction and the, and the death and the negative side of war. If it had a positive element, I think it was the community spirit that was built up by and large by the shelters in the early part of the war, which were communal shelters, street shelters.